League of Legends. A game with certainly one of the most diverse, interesting and unique character designs ever made in the video game industry. Casting over 150 playable characters, each with their unique personality and interesting backstory, all tied together with one of the most detailed and well thought world building you can find in any piece of media. But of course, when you have so many champions in your game, there is just no way you could possibly nail every single one of them flawlessly. See? Even though a lot of the character designs in the game are really good, there are still some characters with a design that is either very old and cliche or others that might have a very interesting backstory that the design, unfortunately, fails to visually convey. But that can be fixed. Hi, my name is Majid, I'm a freelance digital artist slash character designer and this is Character Redesign Episode 1 featuring Kai Sa, daughter of the void. Before we get into the main points, I need to make some things clear, in order to avoid any misunderstandings. This video is not made to talk shit about any of Riot's artists, nor it implies that I'm better than them. These guys are one of the best in the world currently, and I don't see myself nearly as good as they are. The main goal of this video is to only give my personal opinion on why I think this character design falls short of its full potential, and how I would go about visually conveying her story and lore. Another thing is that I'm willingly not gonna take in account the commercial side of the character design process. League characters are made in order to sell skins, so they're most of the time made to appeal to a large portion of the public in order to sell as much as possible. And since I'm not selling any characters or skins, this principle is not important in my process, as my main goal is to tell a story as best as I can using just the visuals. Again, this video is just for fun and I'm not calling anyone out. I hope this was clear and that you'll enjoy your time watching. First, I'm gonna explain why, in my opinion, Kaisa's in-game design isn't very good at representing who she actually is in the lore. And for that, we need to take a look first at her story. Kaisa comes from Shurima, a land covered almost fully in sand. When she was around 10 years old, her village got swallowed by the Void which is some sort of interdimensional consciousness that just wants to devour everything. So she found herself stuck underground trying to survive and get out of there. Equipped with a knife given to her by her father, she soon stumbles upon a void creature that, while being smaller than her, knocks her down. But she successfully pierces the creature's heart with her knife and manages to kill it. Then the creature's dying flesh stuck to Kaisa's hand and she couldn't remove it no matter how hard she tried. With time, she started using it to defend herself and survive. So, that skin grew with her, protecting her and allowing her to kill the void monster and survive. Now that she can find her ways out and into the underground dangers, she spends her life fighting it, trying to stop it from consuming more lies. But that freedom didn't come for free as she's now seen by everyone else as one and the same as those other monsters she keeps fighting all day long. Okay, well, my storytelling skills are not the best, so if you're interested in reading more about her or the League of Legends universe as a whole, I'll leave a link to her bio in the description, I recommend you check it out, it's actually pretty decent. Now that you have more context for who she is supposed to be, we can start diving into why I believe her current look doesn't reflect any of the traits given to us by her bio. First, here are the character traits I can get from that story. She's supposed to be a survivor, someone that's traumatized, desperate, sad, corrupt as in physically corrupt, rejected, living in constant danger, kinda the hunt or be hunted lifestyle. But what we get is, well, a clean, unscarred, undamaged person? perfectly healthy body shape, covered in a very thin looking alien suit that makes her look more like a superhero from a comic book rather than a monster 
which is what we're told she's supposed to look like for the people in the lore. But again, she looks fairly attractive. There is no problem in making attractive characters. I just don't like when it's done for no purpose. Her being attractive in the context of her story adds literally nothing. And being sexy for her isn't even a personality trait. Like, she doesn't care about it at all. She's the kind of person that does stuff not because she wants to, but because she needs to. And having her look like a comic book supermodel kinda sends the wrong ideas about her. Speaking of comic books, the idea of her void corruption is obviously inspired by Venom. A male version of Kaisa would look like this. And this looks, well, like a monster? Something that if you saw in front of you, you'll instantly feel frightened. But looking at Kaisa again, I just don't see why the people of Shurima would consider her a monster. Like, she looks different, yeah, but also very acceptable and appealing to normal people. And she also have a fairly good looking face. No, she doesn't have to be ugly, but why does she have makeup? Like, yeah, she could be pretty, I find that to be smart, like make her originally pretty, so that when you see the beauty get ruined by the void, it kinda gives a more tragic vibe to her, which is supposed to be the case, but looking at her, I can hardly feel sorry for her. To me, she looks like she's having an easy time, like a superhero defeating all his enemies with ease and style. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, it's just that's not who she is. I hope I made it more clear now why I don't think her current design successfully portrays her character. Since we're done complaining, it's about time I show you how I would go about redesigning this character. My first attempt, I tried to go full on the idea of her supposed to look like a monster. Therefore, I focused mainly on asymmetry, as it not only makes any design instantly more interesting, it also can give a feeling of discomfort and distrust, so that even if you see her save your life, you would still not trust her immediately. You can see the asymmetry applied in her mask as it doesn't cover all of her face and also the cannons on her back, I tried to make them have similar silhouette but also not be completely identical. I then tried to get rid of the perfect human body shape by adding thicker layer of void armor. Like yeah, this armor is protecting her but at the cost of making her look inhuman. And I also got the idea that well, since the skin first attached to her arm, it could have became this really big cannon arm that shoots energy, kind of replacing this floaty void crystal again, same idea as before. In order to get power and protection, she had to sacrifice something. And that was the main theme for this drawing. The second sketch, I didn't want to go full asymmetry. I looked at other void champions in League, and I noticed that their designs were monstrous, but also very symmetrical and kinda elegant. So I thought it would be okay to make her look not necessarily like a traditional monster, but more like a void monster, which means that people don't fear her because she looks scary, rather because they recognize the patterns of the void in her. So I went ahead trying to add additional cannons on her thighs, to add more void-like shapes and pieces to her body, but to also get rid of the supermodel silhouette. Then I thought that it would be cool if her mask was something permanent. I think that would tie so well in her story, where she wants people to see her as a human, but she can't even show them her face to prove that. The idea that got in my head for the third one was to show her trying but failing at looking more human. So I thought, why not try to put clothes on her? It's not impossible for her to get something to wear. She can get out of the void and she also stumbles upon a lot of those who actually fell in the void and couldn't survive. 
So I thought the idea of her wearing a cloak or a hood as to hide her corrupt face as an attempt to look less hostile when she meets people, but also have parts of her corruption that just can't be covered in clothes, so that we don't change her story, she still fails at making herself look like a human. For our fourth idea, I thought of this kinda tanky spacesuit, where her protective skin manifests in the same way as the first sketch, where it's very thick, but instead of random shapes, I thought it would look cool if it grew to look like actual human muscles, trying to have her look buff and bulky, without making her actual body unreasonably muscular. I also thought of her mask as a thick, glossy layer that she puts on so that she can see through, but that also protects her face, giving some astronaut spacesuit vibe, leaving the joints kinda free to keep her able to move as freely and quickly as she wants, while also having this thick layer of protective skin. I also made her back cannons smaller, because I didn't want them to compete visually with the rest of her bodysuit, since having them be bigger, like in the original design, would take away from how big and bulky her suit is supposed to look. And with this sketch done, I had a lineup of four ideas that I could choose from. I ended up going with the third one, because I thought with some iterations here and there, it could best represent the image I had in mind of her. As for the iterations, I thought I could explore a bit more on her hood and weapon, since they would be the main visual focus of the character design, at least for now. But then, as you'll see later, I ended up changing her hand to a somewhat normal looking one, as I thought it took away from a crucial and kinda iconic part of her original design that I neglected, which was her back cannons, so I made a small hint at them being hidden under the cloak, so that I could detail them a bit more later.
After I finished the third one, I felt like I got something solid I could continue with. It's not perfect, but I really liked the silhouette, and I could already see what it needed to be a lot better. Then I jumped into exploring some ideas for her face. I had a hard time at first, since I envisioned her as having a strong and tired face, but as I added more void patterns to it, it started looking a bit too alien, which took away from the expression that I wanted her to have. But then again, the third try, I ended up with something that satisfied me. Jumping to colors, I didn't want to dramatically change the color of the void armor, as it already falls into the void color palette with these purples and rusty gold, so I blocked out the main colors that I wouldn't iterate on and started exploring possibilities for her hood, trying to mainly make it look shuriman. This was a bit hard at first, mainly because I added shading to her body, and it made it so that no matter what color her hood had, it would always look off. But after a lot of tweaking, I ended up with a result that I felt could look great if I rendered them. Then I went ahead and shaded the rest. I didn't record it because I didn't have anything to say about it. Which leads us now to rendering her face. I'm not too familiar with rendering this kind of faces, so it was indeed an interesting challenge for me. To avoid giving her the cliche pretty face that her original design had while also not making it look unintentionally bad and disproportionate. After that, I went ahead and rendered the rest of her design, making it look more presentable, getting rid of messy lines whenever needed, and improving the look with more textures and imperfections. At the end, I was pretty satisfied with the result I got, and I consider it a success. But of course, I would love to know what you think of it yourself. For now, enjoy the final result. Yeah, that's it. That's my take on Kaisa. I hope you liked it. This surely was a lot of fun to make. I still don't think I explored the full potential for her design, but in order for me to get this video out, I had to cut down on the amount of explorations and ideas, otherwise I could have never finished it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this and that you like what I came up with for the character. If you disagree with any of the design choices I've made or have anything to add to it, feel free to tell me in the comments. Also, leave a like if you want to see more of this kind of content, share it with your friends, they might be interested by it. That's it for me, I hope you're having a good day, and I'll see you on the next one.